walk with Jesus has been a unique one um, from my perspective because I, I'm, I'm a spiritual teacher, um, but I've never read the Bible. The Bible is very, I've actually never read a lot of books because I have trouble just even following the words and not falling asleep. So I learned that if you fall asleep with a book on your face enough times that you integrate the information. Um, but my walk with Jesus has uh, it's always, it's always been there. I didn't know until kindergarten that no one else saw him. Um, and so he's always just stood in front of me and taught me. And the way he teaches me things is he allows me to experience it. And so it's not like I'm listening to Jesus minister to me. It's like he shares something and I because I surrender, I ask. And then he shares something with me and he allows me to experience it from the perspective of being in that experience. And so um, the last few years, he's been taking me through the embodiment of Mary Magdalene and seeing and feeling through her perspective. And then this week, he took me through experiencing his perspective and um, what the word he gave me to um, speak to you all about today is resurrection to this story in and of itself because I've argued with other spiritual teachers that um, Lazarus and, and Martha were not Mary Magdalene's siblings and then Jesus said well aren't you here to integrate all of the all of the Marys then allow yourself to surrender and go through this experience and so he took me through um, Lazarus getting sick and Mary, Mary of Bethany, um, and her sister Martha, calling for Jesus to come and help um, heal their brother, which they knew he was capable of. And at this point, they were very close with Jesus. They considered him family. And Jesus didn't come. And from the outside looking in, it can seem like he just didn't come because he had his own stuff, like we all do. But that's not the case at all. It's because Jesus was so devoted to listening to what the Holy Spirit was guiding him to do. He didn't make any actions or reactions from his own will because he was in that straight, narrow path. And so he didn't have thoughts about when to go. He was told that this will not end in death. And therefore it did not. But up until that point, Especially with the apostles. The apostles were very, is it this or is it that? And Jesus would say, it just is. No, but is it this or the, is it that? It's not duality. Christ consciousness just is. And um, even in the, the writing of scripture, it's, it's very written in that dualistic um, perspective, which is, comes from, because when people finally listen and hear the voice of God, it comes when they're on their knees and they're having a traumatic experience. And I'm sure all of you guys can relate to having experiences in your life where you finally surrender your ego and you say, I don't know. I keep hitting a brick wall. It doesn't matter if I go this way or if I go that way. It all is just an uphill battle. And when you finally surrender and say, God, what is this for? Please tell me, show me, because I don't know anything. And it's then when we can receive the voice of God, the guidance that comes through. And Jesus just lived in that surrendered state. He didn't hold on to attachments. So when he showed up and um, it was four days after Lazarus had passed and Martha went to him very angry. Like if you would have shown up earlier, our brother would still be alive. And he dismissed her and he went and then Mary came to him and she surrendered herself down to her knees and asked him why he didn't come. And he asked her to show him where they had put their brother. When they opened up the tomb, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out and he was fully alive. Never the same and fully alive. And it was at that moment, the consciousness of Mary realized, oh, my God, this is truly God and man. 
I will never doubt. I will never wobble. I will never go into that. Is it this or is it that? Whatever he says is. And that's why she was the apostle of the apostles, because she didn't question what he said. And I know that we have had deception in every form of leadership. So and with all of the abuse that we've seen in the unholy trinity, it's hard for us to listen to a voice that's coming through and, and speaking as God. It's hard for us not to doubt. But we can get so lost in that doubt that we feel like we're walking around blind. And we're not taught that we first need to have our direct connection with God, with spirit. Then find ourselves, love ourselves. And that up-leveling of love that just pours out of us and we're walking in alignment with the truth of who we are, that's when we can connect with others. But because we're taught, okay, you need to get married by this age, you need to have children by this age, you need to make sure that you have a career and be successful by this age, we put all of these limitations and boxes of expectations on the way our life should be working out. And it doesn't leave space for what you're divinely guided to do. Who, what master are you serving? And so as we're going through this global pandemic and we're seeing this, everybody's experiencing their own level of internal uh, change. And change is uncomfortable, especially because humans are creatures of habit. But it's in that that moment of stillness that we can surrender and listen to what the truth of us is. I mean, how many of us were able to go to elementary school and feel like you just blossomed and like found yourself? No, you went to elementary school and you went, oh God, I guess I'm really weird and um, unlovable. But it wasn't until you started having that experience with peers who don't know themselves and find ways to get attention through picking on one another, especially if you're different and you can't fit into that box. Um, then we start to make that projection, the truth about us. And we stumble around, you know, blindly in the dark. And it's not until we hit a brick wall when we're an adult or if we're married or, you know, whatever it is that we figure out Everything that I was told that I was supposed to have and need in order to X, Y, and Z, it didn't get me anywhere. I'm miserable and I still don't have any idea who I am. It's only then that we go back in the opposite direction, that we start to allow oh, our, our ego to no longer dictate the truth of who we are. And so we're all going through this this purification process within our own lives. This is a, it can feel like, especially with the holidays coming up, you're gonna go to do business as usual and it's going to feel like, oh my God, the world, it's its shutting down and I'm not able to get this. And, and it's just telling you like, we have to stop doing it the way we've been doing it. We can't keep outsourcing and and just living from this narcissistic bubble of consumerism. And, and everybody that has been um, put on this pause, they really need to turn inside and find out what is God calling us to do? And I know that there's, there's a lot of projections placed on the mind of God, and some people can't even hear me when I speak that. So I'm just saying love. It's the tapestry, the thread that weaves us all together. It is what we are all created from. It is the source which gives us life force. The only reason why we experience death upon this planet is because we have cut ourselves off from our source. We don't have to experience death, but it's when we've gone so far away from that, that lifeblood that we end up dying or getting sick. But sickness and tragedy and accidents, it isn't something to be afraid of. It is a wake-up call. It is God giving you a holy two-by-four of a wake-up call, telling you to go in any other direction other than the road you've been traveling. And so we all have like our own roads to travel, and we're all in this together at the same time. And what is being asked of us all is when you 
go in that direction of that light or that information that's calling you forward. Every time we try to put it into our own boxes, we limit God. And so I can think about even this, this Sunday service and this venue. In May, I got the guidance that I was to do um, a festival called Reignite Divine Light. Jesus showed me all of these people, this collective conscious that were standing on the edge of a mountain. And they were about to choose out either through suicide or overdose. And he said, you need to give them the frequency of God, bring them all together, give the presenters and the creatives the frequency of God and ask them for three days to bring that to others. And now as I'm saying that, I'm thinking about how specific he was when he said three days. And it was three days that Jesus went down to unlock hell before his resurrection. And he waited four days, or the Holy Spirit guided him to wait four days before he came to resurrect uh, Lazarus. So I didn't know how I was going to do that. I've never put on a festival and I, you know, don't have a team of people. And then the next day, my roommate's sister hung herself. And I realized the severity and the need for this to be out there and readily available. I know that when I was going through my awakening, I thought I was dying. <laughs> I It was the first time in life that I truly, truly, truly wanted to be here. And then I couldn't sleep or eat anything. And I was just vibrating for 40 days and 40 nights straight. It's like I had gotten to the point where like, if I felt something, I just took a pill for it or I just drank something for it because it's just what you do. And it was like, no, you can't, you can't do that anymore. You have to, you have to be sovereign. You have to be in your purpose. You have to be who you came here to be. You can't just be coping through life. And I didn't see even taking a Tylenol as like a coping. I just thought yeah, this is what you do. And Jesus stood inside of my body and started to push things away from my mouth. And I had a roommate at the time and he was like, oh my God, what is happening? He got so scared he never came back. <laughs> um, and um, it was at the end of that 40 days and 40 nights uh, that finally I surrendered. I mean, it was, it, was, it was intense. And if you guys follow me on YouTube, you can probably see many videos where I talk about it. So I won't go into that now, but it wasn't until the end of that 40 days and 40 nights, I had, I had lost my daughter. Um, I had been with a, a partner on and off since I was 13, who was not great for me. Um, I had been diagnosed with lupus and like my whole life was falling apart. I lost my child, my, my partner, and it was abusive. And then I, it was just a nightmare. And so I had been trying to put my life back together after all of that. It's called a Saturn return. If you guys wonder why people, a lot of people die at 27, it's the Saturn return. And when we go through an, a Saturn return, it's like all of the shadows that have been stuffed down, be careful, being purged, it's coming up to bring it to the light, to bring it to the altar, to allow for God to shine through all of your seven chakras to bring that light all the way down to the root and back and forth to have nothing left untouched by the light and what i found out was that i because um when my daughter came into this world the moment that i found out i was pregnant with her it's like all of a sudden i cared about myself i cared about what i put in my body i cared I cared about the energy that was around me. I cared about whether somebody was smoking, but even the languaging. I, I cared so much about the way in which she was created that it changed me. And I was so sick my entire pregnancy because her frequency was so different in vibration to the way I had been pretending. I had been like half alive, truly. Um, I didn't know who I was, I was very lost because I let all of the projections of this world tell me who I was. And I didn't like myself very much. And so when she came into this world, it was like, I have a purpose. I, I, 
I have somebody that loves me and we have this bond that so intense and amazing. And then it felt like keep it like having myself live like that. It was like I experienced all of this conflict where it was like she was getting taken away from me and all this stuff. And I was like, what is this for? And then I started to fight in that, oh well, I'm allowed to fight like this because I'm a mother. And I got very like hardly reprimanded by the world of like, no, you're still not allowed to act like that. You're still not allowed to be like that. Um, because love needs no defense. And so it was at that choice point where I finally hit my knees and said, oh, God, what is this? Like, I just want to go to sleep. Like, I, I'm losing my mind. I have to go to court in a few days. And I just want to go to sleep. And I heard float in an Epsom salt bath with your ears underneath water until the thoughts stop. And I was like, that's it. Okay. So I did that. And it was about 30 minutes until the thoughts just silenced. And then Archangel Michael appeared at the edge of the bathtub. And I think it was because I was so sleep deprived that I didn't think that this was unusual. And he said, are you ready? And without thought, I just sat up and said, yes. And with this flash of light, he hit me right here. And then every thought I'd ever thought was just answered in a flash of brilliance. And I was like, wow, why was I freaking out? Like, there's so many other options. Oh, wow. Like, it's, it's okay. It's, everything's going to be okay. I see why I chose it. This was all just learning. It was teaching me every point of polarity so I could help every walk of life. It's going to be okay. And so then I started um, getting really excited. And I called my aunts and I was like talking a mile a minute. Just like, oh, you know, Archangel Michael came to me and I understand everything. And, and then I saw this, this feminine angel start to descend from the ceiling and she was walking towards me. I knew at that very moment that this is my angelic form. And it was at that moment that my aunt started to get a, a little afraid. And as soon as her fear came in, the angel left. And it was like a higher version of myself integrated with my physical body in that moment. And if you talk to any of my family members, they can tell you I've never been the same since. There's just it's like, it's not like a walk-in experience where another soul walked in. It was like more of me walked in. And we're all being called to, to call more of us in, more of the truth of the God in us in. And so with Divine Mother Ministry, we're not here to judge you. We're not here to tell you how to be in order to be a good whatever. No, that's all judgment. And that's how we fell from the Garden of Eden in the first place. Divine Mother Ministry is about allowing you to breathe in and experience God within you. Allow it to inspire you. Allow it to, you know, be the dispensation. I think about it like a, a wave, like an ocean wave that just washes over you and you receive it and then it washes back out. And it's just like when you hear music and you're like, you're like lit up and transformed by it and it and it motivates you to go work out or it motivates you to go write something of your own or whatever it is it's like that's what it's there for and often we get so distracted by all of the stuff of this world we meet a person and we're like ooh, and we tap into that truth of who we are and we think that it's the person that's doing it to us but they're just showing you what God is. And that is only like the tiniest fraction of what God truly is. But it's bringing that peace to you to remind you of the truth of who you are. And so here at Divine Mother Ministry, we're just, we're here to be a platform for us all to rise together. It's, it's about allowing for my experience with God to pour into you and for you to have an experience with God and it's pour into us. And if we all just build this tapestry where we all rise together. There is no competition. We're all here to co-create together. But when we're living from dualistic perspective of egos, it's, it's a never ending struggle. And people are always trying to take because they're living from this lack consciousness instead of just knowing that they're completely filled. 
and that there's nothing that they need of this world. The only thing we need is love, and that's the only thing that we can take with us. And so the word that was coming through this week was, it's time to resurrect. But first, we need to see what in our life is dead and dying away. Because it's just like when Jesus was up on the cross. If he would have tried to resurrect up on the cross, it would have been too soon. If he would have came before Lazarus died, it wouldn't have been a resurrection. It would have been a healing. People had already seen healing. They needed to experience that what he was saying, who am I? I'm God in man. And he was not special. He just made a choice. We all have the ability to make that choice. We're all being asked to make that choice. To see, you can keep doing it the hard way, but it doesn't have to be that hard. You can stop and surrender today and allow for the Holy Spirit to guide you, the Divine Mother to walk with you, to be with you. It's like if we have all these angels and guides <laughs> And um, and today the veil is very thin. And so as I just said that, I just saw all of our loved ones filling the room. Um, and so we have all of these guides and guardians around us. And they're all trying to support us, but they can't intervene with our free will. And so when you're you're asking why it has to be so hard, it's simply because you forgot who you are. You forgot to surrender and ask. It's all you need to do. And when we get so distracted by one another, we miss the mark. And to sin is to miss the mark, to not have our focus on God. If you don't have a center point, you will get lost in this world. But to sin and to make it mean all these judgmental things, that is missing the mark. And so when we have relationships and we have that center point, then we're walking home together, getting closer as that pyramid gets closer. And we're constantly being filled by the light of God. So we're not needing to take from one another. And just God is asking for us all to look in our lives and see what is dead and dying away. And to try to hold an immaculate concept with one another to see even when your brothers and sisters have fallen asleep and are acting in certain ways that do not seem holy. I'm sure Mary and Martha probably had their judgments about why Jesus wasn't coming. Martha for sure had her judgments because she had missed his teachings when Jesus had come, come to their house prior. She was busy doing all the things that a woman is supposed to do. Making dinner and cleaning up and doing all this running around. And then she, but her sister was sitting at the feet of Jesus. He was ministering to her and the family. And, and Martha came to Jesus to say, you know, aren't you going to tell my sister that she's doing something wrong? Tell her to get up and help me. Tell her to follow traditions. And he was like, no, she's doing what she, she's ca called and guided to do by the voice of the Holy Spirit. To listen. To forget about all these belief systems. And we got to do it like this. And I hope we're all taking this into our hearts. Because I know that the holidays are coming up. And I feel like the only reason why the holidays are ever stressful with family is because we try to fit it into these boxes of expectations. Like it needs to look like this and we need to get X, Y, and Z and we have to have this kind of meal. It doesn't need to be like that. It reminds me of us having a global pandemic and everybody buying toilet paper. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Like we don't need to all have turkeys and da, 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 da. Like we can do it, whatever is in alignment with the highest love. Just bring more love into your life and Surrender all the things that are not of love and allow for it to die away. And in closing, I'm just getting this uh, last word that is coming through. And yesterday when I was um, out at Chocolate Tree, 
I was guided to um, give one of our flyers for Divine Mother Ministry to this man. And when I went over to him, I said, I was guided to give this to you. And I'm a telepath. So when somebody has intense emotions and they're thinking a thought, I hear it out loud as if they are speaking to me. So often I'm like, I have to decipher whether they said it out loud. But as I'm going to give him this pamphlet, he thinks, oh, my God, she spoke to me. And I'm like, what? And then he said, this is so synchronistic. And I'm realizing you're not even listening to anything I'm saying. So I'm just going to, you know, walk away. All right. Well, he's not listening. And this morning I was being shown that the reason why that experience manifested was for me to have a, a personal experience for the way the Holy Spirit comes to us. And it's in that surrendered state that we receive the information. We receive a piece, a clue. And if it's something we like that we've been wanting, we go, oh, I knew I meant this. And we go and start working on that. And meanwhile, the Holy Spirit is like, um, I didn't finish telling you. Oh, all right. I'll just wait till you're done. And if it's something that we've never heard before, then we, we don't listen long enough. We think we go into doubt. We think, oh, that was really weird. I think I... I think I had guidance, but I'm not sure what it was, and da, 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 and then the mind is clogged. And so it's asking for us to be still and go home a while. And so it's like when that guidance came in in May to do Reignite Divine Light festivals, I didn't have all the pieces. And so as soon as I got that, you know, um, as soon as I found out that my roommate's sister killed herself, I went into panic mode. I was not being the Prince of Peace in that moment. I was like, we need to go to California now. It's all this do, 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 and trying to help and all this stuff. And that's not what my guidance was. I was jumping the gun. That wave came in, but I didn't hear the rest of it. And so when that wave came in again a couple of weeks ago, I think it was um, October 10th was our first Sunday service. and I was told to just go and be in open spaces and parks um, where people that have ears to hear can come and listen and come and hear the good news. And so we set up at the amphitheater outside, but we had amplified sounds. And um, the park and recreation um, guy, he came and he was listening. And then later he told me that we were not allowed to have amplified sound. And so, uh, but he, he was so inspired by what he heard that he went and started working behind the scenes. And so as I was going and a couple of weeks ago, I was guided to go on Cathedral Rock, which I looked like a nutcase, but that's not, that's not where I was in that moment. I wasn't in judging myself, I was in a dress and, bringing all this stuff up the mountain. And there was hundreds of people, so many, so many that uh, my team couldn't find parking. Uh, so they didn't come. So it was just me and my daughter and me yelling on a mountain with a microphone that kept echoing to hundreds of people. And I was just focused on, on being the channel and allowing it to come. And my daughter told me last night that, that lots of people were listening. And um, but that it wasn't my job to be in that ego. Like, is anybody listening? I need to be okay with speaking, even if no one is listening. And um, and then I got a message from Jason saying, "We, you can use the hub if you'd like to have your Sunday services." And now we have this venue. But when I was trying to do it the hard way. When I was looking for a venue and people were telling me there's no way you can do this festival before the end of the year and da 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 da, it wasn't until this morning that I was getting ready and I and I heard Jesus speak again saying, "Thank you for getting it done before November." Like I asked, and I'm like, "Oh my God, okay, you're right." So you just need to surrender and allow for whatever is coming through with our own individual experience with the presence.
and allow that to be the guiding light in our life. It's impossible for us to get to a place of the peace of God when we are still clinging to thinking that we know. And there is a level of distrust and distortion and illusion upon this planet. And we have been taught and socialized to be so physically focused, so distracted by the illusions of this world. And so I have been um, living in this, this state of allowing God to work with me. I have been going through this process this week of like feeling like I'm in a chrysalis and I'm, I'm about to break out of this chrysalis and spread my wings. And the ego, I am not, who its primary job is to keep us alive, right? But even in that thought of thinking we need to be kept alive is defensive. And it is only when we surrender all defenses that our safety lies because love needs no defense. And so as I feel myself about to spread my wings, that ego I am not comes up to say, what if your wings can't hold you? What if you were never meant to fly? What if you're too broken? What if it's not time yet? Who are you to try to teach anyone? You should just keep talking alone in your room on videos and allow people to find your videos if their vibrational resonance to being a frequency match to them. Why would you put yourself out there? Um, you know, you're just going to get judged. You're just going to have all this stuff happen that's not really fun. You're, you're better just being the counterpart. You're better being on the sidelines, being like, yeah, go! Like, aren't they amazing? Look at how, look at their mastery, da 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 And Jesus said, you've already done that. For thousands of years, you've been my devoted student. You've walked with me. Now it is time for you to embody in the Christ and teach them. Teach them how to receive in the way in which you did what you have. Walk this narrow path with me and I will teach you how to be how to be still, how to allow that Christ child to be born. And so we're all going through this purification process. And if you think about it and where you are in that, in that process, if you're clinging to the old life, then you're going to feel that sensation of, ah, like I did when I was going through that kundalini awakening and I was trying everything on the outside to make me feel different than I was. And I thought that there was something seriously wrong with the fact that actually God was working through me. That God cauldron in my spine was being awoken. And... It was magic and miracles that were being manifested through me. But through the distorted lenses of the ego, I am not trying to figure out what had gone wrong with me. It just kept getting worse. And so look at where you are in your own life. Are you holding on to the parts and pieces of your life that God has said it is time to let it go. I have said that this is not going to come with you in the next season. You can no longer pass go on the road that you have been on. It is time for you to powerfully make a choice to either live your purpose or your time on this planet is marked. And that isn't a threat. That is an absolute that is one of the laws of this universe. We are here to expand in our love and joy. We all have our own individual missions and purposes. 
but we are like a beautiful tapestry that is weaved together. Each of our unique puzzle pieces fit so beautifully together. Um, anybody that just gets hit by the Holy Spirit and wants to share in this divine way and allow that inspiration to deepen somebody else's inspiration and to keep growing and expanding in this beautiful love and tapestry so that we can weave and create a beautiful new life while we co-create with God. My name is Kendra and you guys can find me at KendraDivinePurposeMentor.com. I love you all so very much. Thank you for joining me and thank you for supporting Divine Mother Ministry.